I started out in the military, uh, joined up when I was 19 and uh, started out just regular infantry and slowly kind of worked my way up. Uh, ended up uh, in 7th Special Forces Group as a Green Beret and that's where I, I was taught to teach. That was a, a huge part of our job with that particular unit. Um, wasn't a very good teacher to be honest with you when I first started. Uh, fortunately that unit kind of really helped me develop my, my technique, how to intelligently convey information to uh, different types of people, people that may not have a lot of background information on the subject matter you're trying to teach them. And then after my military service, uh, like teaching so much, I figured I'd uh, try to continue that in the civilian sector, uh, in the firearms industry, and uh, started that in the civilian side in 09, and been doing that ever since. First unit I was in was the uh, 82nd Airborne. I was a sniper in the scout platoon, and that was my first tour in Afghanistan. Uh, really liked the job. Uh, it, it was a conventional army unit, great unit, a lot of history. Uh, however, I was a little bit of a rebel. Uh, kind of like to go against the grain a little bit, which isn't the best spot for you in, in the regular army. Um, so because of that, on that particular tour, that was my first exposure to uh, guys in special forces. And uh, I liked their style, liked their knowledge, liked their professionalism. And uh, as soon as I got back from that tour, I went to uh, special forces selection and tried out. Was fortunate to make it and then had a slight break in service. I got a little disillusioned uh, with how the war was being run and was out for about nine months. And uh, a lot of my friends stayed in. And after nine months, I just uh, couldn't stand it anymore. I felt like they were having all the fun and still contributing to the war on terror. So I re-enlisted. Fortunately, I was able to more or less pick up right where I left off. Uh, graduated the uh, Special Forces course and then uh, did two more tours in Afghanistan and one tour in Iraq with uh, 7th Group after that. All right, what we got here is, I think everybody's actually shot at this range before at some point in time, right? Okay, awesome. We got a couple of changes and I'll get to them if you haven't already heard. Uh, but what I want you to do is kind of familiarize yourself with the topography of the range. So we're gonna, gonna give you the once over the world about how the wind historically likes to behave here. Like Debbie pointed out earlier, uh, on this particular range, you can get wind flags blowing in opposite directions at different yard lines, all right? And there's no reason to get hysterical about it. Uh, I just want you to have a general working knowledge of why that may happen. So like we said in the class, wind is like water, so it takes the path of least resistance. So if you look, let's say, right about the 100 yard line, or correction, the 200 yard line, just the second white target, if you look off to the left of the moat area, you see a thicket of scrub, you know, persimmon trees and all that kind of nonsense. That acts as kind of like a natural wind break, so that can affect how the wind flows. So if the wind is coming from the left to right, it really doesn't affect you at the 200 yard line that much because of that shrubbery right there. What's gonna happen next? Like we already gave you a heads up with, we're gonna get an actual, uh, uh, data book of your round. So we're, when the time comes, we're going to get behind your gun. Ken and I will be constantly giving you tips and pointers and checking your fundamentals and we'll be behind the spotting scopes. But we're going to start at the 100 yard line uh, just to kind of reconfirm. And we're just going to start from the left. So number one will fire. Once you're good, number two will fire and just go down the line. And then once we're done with 100, we'll go to 150 all the way out to eight. Kind of learning as we go and uh, double checking our fundamentals, uh, getting some new skills. If there are any questions that arise, by all means, this is definitely an OJT exercise. So uh, ask me right then, right there, and we'll sort it out. Everybody good with that? Okay, good deal. Let's go ahead and get behind your rifles. Protected, good deal. Whenever you're ready, Garrett. One round center mass. Natural point of aim, breathing. When you're ready, good manipulation of the trigger. Go for it. All right, nice work. A little bit left, nothing to get hysterical over. All right, moving right along. Michael, good deal. Center mass. All right, Brian, you are up next. Nice work. Center mass. Doc, go for it. Nice. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You can feel it in your bones, can't you? I've got a silencer coming, but it's not going to be here for about two more months. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, as a whole, very good work. All right, Garrett, go for it. That's better. That's a good center mass hit. Michael, you are up. Good center mass. Nice work. Good trigger press. Brian, it's on you. Excellent. Way to regulate your breathing. I didn't see you move right before you broke the shot. That's what I want to see. All right, Doc, go for it. I've seen better. Not many, but some. It's passable. All right, Stu. Excellent. Debbie. 
Nice work, center mass. All right, Don, go for it. There you go. Mr. Allen. There's always one in every class. Good job. All right, so again, let me talk to y'all or ask y'all, did anybody have to add some elevation? 